What's better than one billionaire? Two. Two. Especially if they from the same hue as you. Y'all stop me when I stop telling the truth. Hi. Welcome to my channel. We are back in the setup. Um, I think it looks pretty good from what I'm seeing on the camera. I look great. Um, so yeah, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny Fire. If you are a new subscriber, welcome. How you been? How's your mother? All of that. If you are a um, frequent subscriber, thank you so much for staying with me between all of my jankiness. I, I really appreciate that because I know it's been a very long journey. But you know, we are three weeks in. And if you are new to my channel, that's a big deal. If you're old to my channel, you're like, girl, bye. You were three weeks in last time and you disappeared for whatever. But we're back. Why you gotta bring up old stuff? Let's move on. Anyway, I still have allergies and it's still taking over my life. So you're gonna hear a lot of that. And if you're a person who doesn't like sounds like that, I, I, I'm sorry. Um, I can't stop it. Um, unless I'm gonna blow my nose the entire time. And if you're somebody who hates that sound, I'm pretty sure blowing my nose is not gonna be any better. Um, Today, I want to come in and let's have a conversation talking about black businesses, buying black, black entrepreneurship. Um, living in New York, buying black is one of those things where it's just kind of like, more likely you own something in your apartment that was made by a black person or from a black vendor or a black storefront of some kind. Um, it's easy, it's Brooklyn. There's so many creatives in this borough that I won't say it's impossible, but you would have to really, really be determined to not buy from a black vendor or creative of some kind. Um, like, or like go to a black or own restaurant. It's like, it's, it's not saying it's, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying you would have to really try. There are so many great restaurants in Brooklyn that I love that are all black owned. Um, I love buying black. It's one of those things where I just, it feels like a... It's so good to see somebody, especially people that you know. Like I know people who are now like creatives and doing amazing things and I feel so happy when I get a chance to support because it's like, yeah girl, I know you. I ha I was there when you was just, you know, making these things by hand in your apartment and now you got a whole storefront and shit. That's amazing, yes. I like it. Here's the problem. Some of y'all are very talented. Some of y'all know your skill set and, and, and you stick to it and that's great. Some of y'all don't have any business experience whatsoever. And that's a very big difference. And I feel like we're always about like, yeah, we tell everybody, you should start a, you should start a podcast and you should start a YouTube channel. You should do this and you should do that. But there's a different, you. there's more that you bring to the table than just talent when it comes to those kind of things. And... I'm learning that just doing what I do now with this channel. It's more to it than just me sitting in front of a camera talking. It, it, it wish I wish it could just be I wish it could just be just that, but it's not. So for a lot of people, it's just like yeah, I do nails or yeah, I do hair or yeah, I make um, you know chokers or yeah, I, I, I make T-shirts and it's folks just support you automatically, right? No. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you do hear people say, like, you know, the product happens to be trash. Fine. But a lot of people are just like, yeah, love homegirl. She's a shady business practice person. And that really can fuck up your brand and your product all because something small like that. For example, there is a black-owned nail salon that I love going to. I'm not going to name it because I'm about to bash it right now. Um, but I, if you followed me, you've done named it before. And I love going there to get my nails done. I recently just stopped for some reasons. But when I used to go, I would have to clear up my whole afternoon because I would be there for hours past my appointment time. So my appointment would be like 11 o'clock. I wouldn't sit into a chair until 12 o'clock. And I understand people doing nails a little bit you know you can't really time it or whatever but this was a company or i guess this establishment that was just so like they were very set up really good and they had like um not like a style seat but they had a website where you could you know set up your appointments all type of stuff and do all of that and they even had it where it wasn't even it was like an hour they gave you an hour and a half to get your nails done so if i got had an appointment at 11 o'clock the next appointment was not until 12 30. and i would come at 11 I'm in here, I'm sitting down for the next hour just to get into my seat, which knocks everybody else behind me 
back and now you're telling me mm, do you really want to do stones and do you really want your nails to be that long and mm, you huffing and puffing because you have to rush my job because you have someone else waiting but that's not my fault either you're not as fast as you thought or you maybe you need a two hour um time window so an hour and a half time window and it just ends up it becomes a, a domino effect of things because it's like okay like you know if you have five people that day who all got knocked back on their appointment one all got rushed two all got bad nails three that's five people who are going to tell five people <laughs> about their experience who will also tell five oh yeah my homegirl told me she went to that salon that's what happened like word of mouth is a big deal because that can end up coming back to bite you in the butt and I don't think pe people think about that when they're they're just in their mind, I provide a great service. That should be enough. No. <laughs> that's not how that's work at all. Like I've seen like like different like skincare um services. Like I love like um I love supporting like black owned skincare stuff because skincare is so expensive. Oh my god, I can't like I look at Lemur and Lemaire, Lemur, Lemire. Sure. I look at that website a lot. I'm like, ooh, all the things I would buy and serums and moisturizers. And, ah. and it's just like $80 for this like little bottle. They got a $2,000 thing of moisturizer. $2,000. That's like more than my rent. $2,000. My New York rent. Um. Uh, so I like supporting um, black skincare people because I'm like, yes, girl, you made that at home. I'm all for all the naturals and stuff. Mm, yes. And then you order and then it's been two months. Where is it? Like, <laughs> you know, you, 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 you spent forever trying to get the product that by the time you even get it, you're not even excited anymore. And you don't want to do it anymore. And I feel like this this happens so many times and it's just I feel like before you tell your friend who paints or you tell your friend who does hair, ooh, hair. Let's talk about hair. Especially I don't know if this is an all around like a worldwide thing or a universal thing. I feel like it's just probably New York. It's ridiculous. The pricing alone it's already like whoa I let kind of pricing slide because I know that people pay booth fees and stuff like that. Some of these style seat stipulations, I was thinking of getting some Marley twists. But this one girl that I saw, I saw her work on Instagram, looks really, really good. And I was like, ooh, I like that. Um, I reached out to her kind of like, you know, I'm not going to put her name out there because I, I don't want that to be shown that I'm bashing her. But I put her name out there and I was like, hey, you know. I would love to get some more Marley twists and stuff, how much you charge and everything. And she kind of gave me her price and I was kind of like, okay. I'm a little high. Um, I, for what I know, she was just doing it like in her house or something, which is fine. Don't get me wrong. I come from a long line of women who did hair, who kitchen beauticians and stuff. My mother was a kitchen beautician herself. She braided she's braided hair when I was a kid. I would come back from school and see a random woman in my house all the time. So don't get me wrong, I'm not judging. But it was in our home and the price was pretty high. It was about 200 And um, the stipulations were insane. Bring my own hair. Um, I couldn't bring liquids or snacks outside of water. I couldn't bring anybody else with me. I had to bring a small bag. Um, uh, I only I had to be on time. And if I was five minutes late, there'll be a $30 charge for that. Um, it was like, oh, my hair had to be blown out, uh, washed, clean, conditioned, and blown out. She would not do natural hair. And I'm just like, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not, I do heat on my hair, um, enough. But it was just like, you can't just braid. Wouldn't that be easier for you to braid it while naturally? That would be quicker and there's more grip than blown out hair. The stipulations were so long. And so crazy. The part that got me was no snacks, no liquids, only water and clear bottles. And I was like, what? Maybe she has white carpet. I don't know. But it's like, I see stuff like that all the time. Folks who say, come get your hair done and they want your hair washed, blow. Like people who work at salons, wash, blow and dry, uh, uh, conditioned, all that before you get there. Or I see people who want to get stolen done or get their, their, their lace cut, cam, their lace fronts attached. Your hair's washed, blown dry, braided before you get there. I gotta braid my own hair before I get there. What are you doing? 
all you're all you're doing is putting it on my what and I've seen that so many times I'm just like you guys are really letting your skill get to your head where you feel like business practices and respect and just common courtesy can be excused because you that good the only person who's that good is Tokyo Styles and I don't think he has situations like that to begin with it was one of those things where you're just kind of like ah do I even want to support like his hair salon by me actually on um they're off of Halsey Street, actually. If you know his hair salon, I want you to write down below because I can figure out what's going on. Every time I pass his hair salon, they got people in there. They doing hair, right? And I'm always like, ooh, it's all black girls in there. It's always black patrons. So I'm kind of like, this one be. And I live quite close. I'm not going to tell you where I live, but I live very close to Halsey. So I was like, I could. I could walk here. I could be getting my 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 trims on time. I can get treatments. Yes, let me find out what's what's the salon about. Do y'all do natural hair? I'm seeing them doing um, uh, lock twists. So I'm like, hello, it's so hard to find a good natural hair salon. I knock on the door. Every time I pass it, though, it says closed. But I see patrons in there. But I pass it pretty late. So I'm thinking maybe they close early and they have little late night um, clients, clientele who come in after work. And I'm just seeing that. So I knock on the door. And, then, and you know, lady comes out. She's just like, hmm, what you want? And I was like, oh, I was wondering, are you guys open? She's like, no, we closed. And I was like, okay, I see you doing hair, but okay. And I was like, well, when are you guys going to be open? She's like, I don't know. And I was like, okay. She closed the door in my face. And I still passed that, and that happened probably two months ago. And I still passed that salon, and it still says closed, and there's still patrons in there all the time and in my mind I'm like girl are you not about your coin do you know where you are do you know where who, what you're around there are so many black people around you like if there's a salon in the neighborhood folks are not gonna want to take trips all the way to Flatbush to get their hair done no come to you you're right there people get off this train station every time and pass you black folks people of color women of color in general men of color in general you could have so many patrons I, I know so many black folks live in my neighborhood who are natural, who have dreads. I can't want I can't want for you. You should want for you. And 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 it's just things like that that I see. And it's like y'all not about y'all coin. And it's like that's true because you feel like your talent is enough. My ability to do what I do is enough. So I can be nasty. I can be rude. I can have crazy stipulations. I can do all of that because I'm talented enough and my talent overrides all of that. And the only person who can do that is Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey can be a total asshole to people, but Mariah Carey is an amazing singer. So that's absolutely okay. And sweetheart, none of y'all are Mariah Carey. <laughs> And I'm not bashing black business, don't get me wrong. I just want a lot of us to like take a quick entrepreneur 101 course, a little business 101 course, you know? Is there a, is said restaurant impossible? Is there like a black business impossible or something? Don't get me wrong. They got pieces like Fashion Nova and shit that do terrible, terrible business practices on their own. But I'm talking about my people because I want us to win. I don't care if Fashion Nova wins. I don't care about it. Forever 21 not sending your order on time or boohoo taking two weeks to get your stuff on time because trust me I know I want us to win I just want us before we're quick to tell somebody you should open up a, a, a cartel website you should open up an Etsy shop wait let's say hey here's a link to a business one-on-one -on -one video or webinar or something check that out and then suggest they open up an Etsy shop or something I want us to be empires and build you know quote unquote generational wealth and stuff but I just think like we need to take a second to know the business side even my mother who was an amazing businesswoman before she stuck her foot in anything her money in anything she spent ugh, probably a good six months or eight months just studying the business asking questions sitting in on meetings taking notes up late night learning about procedures and stuff just on her own before she even said let me divulge myself into this business I want to all take a step back and do that 
before we call ourselves business people or business women or men or whatever because yeah the product is great and trust me I still go to Flatbush to get my nails done um when I have the money that is I, I if I have it I'll go I'll get my nails done there but I don't want to have to plan my day around the fact that you have slow tech you have slow nail techs I don't want to order something and know that I'm not going to see it for two months because you have an issue getting your mailing out and you don't know how to do orders on a rolling basis. I don't want to have to order a swimsuit in November so I can get it in May. <laughs> it's one of the things where it's like, we see it. We see y'all talent. It's stop thinking that we also are just going to take it because we want to buy black. Because best believe there is somebody out there who took the time to know how this works. Probably sell swimsuits that are probably not as cute. But they, when it's a two-day ship and it gets here in two days. But just to like end the video and just give y'all a couple of brands that are pretty dope. There is Ofur, Ofur, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, O-F-U-R-R-E. That is um, the company that I got my um, choker from, which I took off because I couldn't really breathe the top. But it's so cool. I got a, um, I also had this like beautiful sweater that says Queen on it. I did not get it. These were gifts to me. But they're beautiful. Um, there's also Movie Pass. Movie Pass is a service. I think it's still, as of this video, still black owned. It is a service where you pay ten bucks a month, you get a card in the mail, and you can see a movie a day for free for ten dollars. And maybe for people who are not watching, who don't live in New York, ask whatever. But tickets in New York are fifteen dollars to see a movie. By the time you go to dinner and you see a movie and, and maybe you get yogurt afterwards, you spend about a hundred. The hundred dollar date is real. The hundred dollar date is a real thing. That's in New York. Yes. Um, Cashmere, obviously I put her stuff down there. Her art is amazing. Like, yo, um, a good friend of mine named Sean, aka Smackly Smack, he does beautiful renditions of the female body. Like his art is beautiful. One of his subjects. It's me, a couple of my friends too. He has books called the Red Book series. And they're just like these gorgeous like drawings of women in different poses. It's very artsy and it's very ooh, like French girls. Um it's great. I'm telling you, Music Soul Child. Music Soul Child has every copy of this series in his home. So that should tell you something. I'm gonna put this information down below as well. Um Asodora. Asodora is also she also makes chokers and headbands. So I normally make mine out of scraps of fabric that I might have around the house, but I've seen some of hers that are just so beautiful, like beautiful silk pieces. I'm just like, oh, it's my next paycheck because I'm gonna be poor. Um, there's Be Fine Swim, Be Fine Swim. I can't wear any of them because of boobies, but a lot of my homegirls have, and they got banging bodies, and the swimsuits look even banging on them. Um. Yeah, definitely check out their swim swimsuits. Uh, then Isokan. Isokan makes amazing bodies. All the bodies that you see that are like all the Ankara and beaded ones are her. And I know you're thinking like it's a bonnet girl. But listen, when you want to look cute, you know, maybe you're in the house and your man's around the house and shit. And you, maybe your hair's not on yet. You put a little bonnet on. Got a little pride. Yeah, I think also tease. Trap, trap, tease. Tease by the trap. Ooh, I'm messing that one up. I think that one is still black owned. I know it has great like like um pay uh pay label cups pay label t-shirts if you follow lovey lovey has her pins on there i think her book is on there her t-shirts are on there the only donald we we acknowledge is glover t-shirts i think t's t's in the trap i think that one's so black on there check them out for sure for sure um yeah, there's all these amazing black-owned uh, businesses that you can definitely try out. The ones who are shady need to get it together. I want to give you my coin. I really do. But I can't if I don't get my stuff until September. Anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's a lot shorter than my last one because I am an adult and I got things to do. <laughs> <laughs> and if you made this far in the video, subscribe. You have what's, it's easy. Just the button is right there or it's right there. It's somewhere here is red, press it. And the bell next to it, you're already on a clicking spree. 
press that one too. And while you're at it, next to the bell is a share button. I think, share it with your friends, with your mama. I think I'm funny, you think, you're, you think I'm funny, you've already made this far, you might as well. Yeah, I think I've covered everything you say at the end of a video. Don't judge my hair, it's a mess by the way. Also, if you're wondering where I got this schnazzy coat from, I made it for the Black Panther premiere and I felt like wearing it for this video because I didn't have any clean clothes. Anyway, love you guys. See you guys this time, maybe next week.